Okay, what's good everyone, back again with another video, and today we're going to be talking about gaming IMs in 2024. So there's a lot of discussion on gaming IMs nowadays, and it makes sense because IMs in terms of purchasing quality have skyrocketed over the past few years. In my opinion, for a gaming focus, I think the discourse is kind of muddied though, and I'm here to give you a clear and concise way to tell if an IM is for gaming or not. So what info is there on gaming IMs right now? Well, there's reviewers of IMs, and there's also reviewers who tell you how it is for gaming. Take Critical, for example. You all know him if you know anything about IMs. If you don't know a lot about IMs and you don't know who he is, he's basically like the main content creator of IMs right now. And in his video discussing gaming headphones, not gaming IMs, but headphones, he basically boiled it down to what headphones you use doesn't matter because you suck at the game, you're not going to make it to the league, so just get whatever. Now I agree with him in one sense, and the, that sense is it doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is not necessarily because you suck at gaming, but because IMs don't suck anymore. You have like $20 sets that are achieving what $50 sets used to, and the $50 sets are doing what $100 sets used to, so on and so forth, right? It doesn't matter what you use because everything in 2024 is good enough. And if it's not good enough and it's really bad, you'll probably be able to tell from other reviews that don't even have to be gaming focused. He then recommends some headphones and he says something like, I would use this headphone for gaming and gaming only, not for music. And I'm here to tell you that I disagree with that point. You shouldn't get an IEM tuned for gaming. Just get an IEM with decent tuning and you'll be fine. Now, what if you are great at video games? You're either ranked grinder or you're a pro or something, right? Someone might argue, hey, in that case, you need IEMs with the best technical performance. You need the best separation. You need the best technical, whatever you want to call it, right? I'm here to tell you again, it doesn't really matter, right? Let me tell you why. These are stereo audio devices, right? You have left and you have right. You don't have a z-axis it's really really hard to get 3d audio from these stereo devices so what this results in is you have games that are designed with stereo audio in mind and you have games which try to have 3d and important 3d audio cues which then end up failing take a game like apex where there's verticality on the buildings there's verticality and movement there's all kinds of sounds in a game of Apex, you have full idea of what's going on based on the audio. Fortnite, however, had the balls to give you the accessibility option to have kind of this visual audio cue, which helps a lot. So tying back to IEMs, these IEMs, no matter how expensive a one you buy, won't change the fact that your game is either designed audio-wise, like shit, or designed well. So just get something that's basically a good IEM. So if we're not focusing on something like imaging or sound separation or technical performance, then what should we be prioritizing? And here's my list. Number one, comfort. If you're going to grind for six to 10 hours, you're going to grind rank. You're just trying to play as much as you can to get better. You better not feel those IMs after a couple hours or even 30 minutes, right? So if you're watching this video, you might have never experienced an uncomfy pair of IMs, but you probably experienced a pair of uncomfy shoes. You know the shoes that are too tight and they need to break in and you start feeling hot spots on your toes? Well, you can get those in your ears if the IMs are not designed well. So that leads me to this first subcategory of comfort, which is shape. In my opinion, an IEM that you buy for gaming should be molded or semi-custom molded or at least rounded in design in some kind of general shape that actually considers the human ear. There's a lot of IEMs that have like sharp edges or it just doesn't look like it was made for human ear at all. Now I know these have a very strong fan base, but look how wide this thing is. And then not only how wide it is, but look how deep the nozzle goes. And then look at the nozzle itself. It is very thick. These don't feel good for me after 30 minutes. Now, keep in mind, the shape is subjective. What works for me might not work for you, and what doesn't work for me might work for you. But in my opinion, after trying a lot of IEMs, this is my take. These are kind of shaped terribly. If you look from the side, it doesn't really look like an ear's curvature, right? And another important part, in my opinion, is the edges or the corners, right? These corners are not rounded off very much. They're rounded off, but they're still kind of sharp. Something like the Aria that gets hundreds, maybe thousands of recommendations has a similar issue, and that's made of metal, so it's even heavier. The corners of these IMs should be rounded off well enough so that you don't get hot spots there after a long period of time. Look at something like the Truth Ear Hola, which has semi-molding, I would call it, and these corners are rounded off a lot. It just looks like something that was actually designed for the human ears. So in terms of the shape department, this will get approval from me. The second subcategory of comfort is weight, which also coincides with material, right? 
these metal IEMs are going to be heavier and you're going to feel them more over time. Whereas these plastic ones, the Hola is plastic besides the metal faceplate, plastic ones are going to be lighter and better over time, which means better for gaming in my opinion. The second thing you need to focus on is sound signature. So this might sound contradictory, but hear me out. What you want is a V shape in a gaming IEM. The reason why is because you're playing long periods of time. If you're playing long periods of time and you have the volume high, then it's going to damage your ears over time. To refer to Critical again in his AirPods Pro 2 review, he referred to something called the equal loudness curve. Basically what this means is that your ear is going to hear bass and treble more at higher volumes. So if you want to turn the volume down, what you need is a boost in the bass and the treble. And a V shape is exactly that. There's a bass boost and there's a treble boost, which is why it's a V. So in my opinion, for gaming, for longer periods of time, you're gonna want that V shape, turn the volume down a bit to protect your ears. Whereas something like a neutral sound might incentivize you to turn the volume up to get a bit more bass or treble extension, which is gonna damage your ears over longer periods of time. Going back to the Truth Ear Critical Zeros, these are great for gaming because they have that V shape. So while I don't like the shape for gaming, I will concede that the sound signature, especially the standard blue edition, is very good for gaming because of what I said. With a deep V shape, you can turn the volume down more. The third category is cable. So you're gonna want a lightweight cable with one, no angled connector, two, no braiding on the part that touches your ears. As a general recommendation for a gaming cable, I will recommend to just buy a Chew 2 just for the cable alone. As you can see, I have the Chew 2 here without the cable. That's because I love using them on other IEMs. You have no braiding on the ear loops, so you won't get hot spots over here over time. And it's very lightweight, no angled connector, so you get a natural ear loop. Something like the Zero 2 has a slightly angled connector, but it checks all the other boxes enough that I think it's still good. The Truth or Critical Zero has this braiding where the ear loops are, combination with this not fitting my ears in the first place this part gives me hot spots and the im itself gives me hot spots so for me a recipe for disaster so that's my theory in order to recap we'll say first tier is comfort and in comfort you want shape you want a good rounded off shape with no sharp corners and in general you just kind of want something that actually looks like it fits the human ear the second tier for comfort is weight and the third tier for comfort is material you want a lighter IEM that tends to be a plastic material, though I'll still recommend some lighter metal IEMs. Second is sound signature. You want a V shape because you want to turn the volume down for longer play sessions and still retain the meat of your music and games, which is treble extension and bass. And the last tier is the cable. You want a cable with no angled connector because for the most part, those are pretty uncomfortable in my opinion. And second, no braiding on the part that touches your ears or the ear loops, just a straight thin cable. So let me start with my recommendations. The Chew 2, like I said before, just get it for the cable alone. These don't have a good shape, but they're small enough that they don't get too uncomfortable. And yeah, just use the cable on other IMs. 702, this is a recommendation with a star. I highly recommend it. It has a great V shape, a bit better than the Shoe 2 in my opinion. The cable is nice and light, no braiding on the ear loops. The shape doesn't look that intuitive to the human ear, but if you take a look on the corners, it's very rounded off. And the shape is actually very pillowy and very comforting over long periods of time. Truth Ear Hola, this has rounded off treble compared to the Chu 2 and the Zero 2 with still retaining the bass boost. So it still has a good V-shaped signature for gaming over longer periods of time. And even better in the treble region because it is rounded off better for longer periods of time. I still take the 702 over it though. I'm also gonna throw in the Tantium 1. I have the DSP version. These are even better because they don't even need to touch your ears basically besides the ear tips. I don't think anyone who's ever used earbuds will have any complaints about this. This basically looks like a skull candy of old times. Sound signature, V-shaped, you can get it even better with DSP. Even though I think DSP is kind of weird, you can go ahead and get the 3.5 millimeter version. But yeah, great cable, lightweight. These hang from your ears instead of looping around. So the ingress and egress is very good and good for gaming sessions. If say you want to take bathroom breaks and you don't want to loop the IMs over your ears every single time. In the next ish tier, I'm going to recommend the TRN Conch and the Simca EW200. In my opinion, these are almost the same IEM with the EW200 having a bit faster and better bass texture. Both also have great treble extension and the Simga EW200 has a good cable without the braiding on the loops. I have the conch here, which has the braiding on the loops and the angle connector, which are both failing, but this is only $35. With the Chu 2 cable, this is still only $55 total. I also don't have the EW200 because it didn't fit my ears very well, but you can see the conch is very round and 
doesn't give me hotspots like the EW200 while also giving me very similar performance. $35, very, very good. EW200 is 40 and it's also very, very good. Next tier, $100, here is the gold standard in my opinion. This is the EA500LM, which has actually just released. But for $90, you're basically getting an EW200 on steroids. And SimGuy is kind of doing a brave thing of challenging their own SimGuy EA1000 IEM at the $90 price point. For reference, that EA1000 is $220. Uh, we'll throw in the EM6L, which I would have put before the LM came out. And the reason why the LM kind of kills it is because, again, SimGot has a very repetitive sound signature across all their IEMs, and the LM just does it better than the EM6L, in my opinion, because the EM6L's dri dynamic driver that's providing the bass is... A lot weaker than this. Another $100 tier IEM is the S12. I only have the S12 Pro here, but planar means best technical details, which is good for gaming, and just music in general. Also, these are very V-shaped, more so the Pro, but the Pro is closer to the $150 tier, right? Because these are $135 and the standard S12 is $110. In the $150 tier with the S12 Pro though, I start to think that it's not worth going that high unless you want to become an autophile, and you should probably just get the LM. Now in the $200 tier, Again, I don't think it's worth going here, but if you have to, I recommend the Binary Giz Audio Chopin. It's also a great V-shape, amazing bass texture, and amazing detail for $200. The shape is kind of weird, but it's not metal, so it's lightweight and actually very wearable for long sessions. Now, if you want to exceed 200, the only recommendation I can give you is the Blessing 2 Dusk and the Blessing 3. I haven't tried the Blessing 3, only the Dusk, but they're probably very similar. You can see other reviews for it. These are molded very well, but in my opinion, they're too heavy and the Dusk cable is absolute dog shit. So don't blame me if you go here because I told you to go back and just get the LM anyways, right? So those are my recommendations. If you didn't see your favorite IEM and you're already getting ready to call me slurs in the comments section, just realize that... Your favorite IEM, either I haven't tried or it doesn't fit the categories well enough for me to recommend it for gaming. Like I said, we're prioritizing comfort and V-shaped sound signature for gaming. Again, a lot of this is subjective. I don't think these re exact recommendations are going to work for you depending on your ear shape. But I'm just letting you know what you should prioritize. You should get the most comfortable IEM and something with a V-shape. Anything beyond that, like imaging, detail retrieval, all that stuff, is not something you should prioritize for a gaming IEM. Because like I said, in 2024, IEMs are just so good that it doesn't matter anyways. So yeah, thank you and peace out.